Hi, I'm Chris Silla. I'm the creator, writer, and artist of Crit. My social media handles are Instagram.com slash Homebrewed Comics, Facebook, Homebrewed Comics with an X, not a CS because I'm that cool. And you can find everything at homebrewedcomics.com that has our Kickstarter links, our social media links. You can purchase books, T-shirts, and stuffed animals there. So, And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Thanks. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It is 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes long, give or take. I know I say I edit it down to 15 minutes, but I know the last couple of episodes have not been 15 minutes. So look, you get extra content, sue me. And we are joined on a one-on-one -on -one style interview with a very talented and creative person in the entertainment industry. So who is our guest today? Our guest today is a returning guest. We had him back on the show talking about the unique concept of having a D&D &D style group with superheroes called Crit. And he was also in a, a band as well that got signed to a major label. So if that doesn't pique your interest, or if you haven't watched any of his past interviews on the show, well, we are joined by the ever-talented Chris Saloff. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it feels like it was almost yesterday that you came back on the show, but in, re <laughs> in reality, it was very early on in the year. So I'm glad to see you back. I believe it was like March or something like that. Yeah, my last campaign was March of this year for um, issue five, and we just fulfilled that. Actually, about three months because well, as soon as I shipped the other uh, book off the printer, I started working on this one. Yeah, we have a pretty busy production schedule. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Um, all right, so my name is Christopher Saloff. I am uh, a dungeon master, and I turned my D&D game into a comic book. It was just so much fun getting together with my friends after 10 years and talking about all the crazy stuff from the campaign. So I taught myself how to draw and just started working on the comic book. Didn't think it would really turn into what it has, but you know, here we are three years later, I've got stuffed animals, <laughs> I've got figures, I've got posters, comics, and we are launching an energy drink with this campaign as well. Always something new. The title for your, of course, this campaign is, is listed below, but it's called Caffeinated Chaos. And mm -hmm. I, I have to admit from a... A naming convention, I think that's pretty amazing. I, I love it. It's piqued my interest in the fact that you have an energy drink as well along with it. Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Kickstarter, actually starting on Wednesday, you will be able to sign up. Unfortunately, I can only ship the energy drink within the United States because uh -huh. of you know permits and licensing and things. I'm working on something with my fulfillment center because they can ship internationally. And that might be something I offer afterward just a lot of things that you've got to make sure you can get done. And so I want to get the book funded first before I start pumping money into the fulfillment on the drink. Tell us about this newest campaign, Caffeinated Chaos, because, you know, that's that's what I'm truly interested in. Because I, I saw the cover and I thought it was beautiful. Now I want to see your video for the Kickstarter campaign, you know, so that's why you're on this show to tell us all about it. <laughs> <laughs> for people that are returning readers, Crit has, you know, they've gone up on their own. They've separated from their employer and... As a dungeon master in game, I said, well, if you're not going to be working for them, how are you going to get money to do all of your adventuring? And they pitched a coffee company to me, a mobile coffee company. And they're going to use this mobile uh, coffee truck to go around the city and make money. And then when something bad happens, they're going to jump out of the truck and save the day. <laughs> And that was pretty much how it was pitched to me. So there was talks about putting a, a high-powered coffee gun on the truck and all these very cartoonish things that I shot down because it just didn't make sense. This issue, that's where they're starting. They have their own business. Their biggest challenge is owning a small business because mm. it's tough. Um, so they're arguing and they're trying to figure out who has what role. And then utter chaos uh, ensues as a giant robot that's being displayed at this uh, electronics expo near them goes haywire and starts attacking people. And so they have to run out in Barissi outfits and everything and fight a robot. When I was asked recently how to describe this book, I said, 
if you were to watch an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and then mash it with Ninja Turtles, <laughs> pretty much how this one plays out. If that strikes your interest and seems like fun to you, that's where we're picking up. But for all the new people, this campaign will have every book. So this is the seventh book in the series. We have issues zero through five. They will be available. And if you're kind of on the fence and none of that even sounds really cool, just kind of cool, I have issue zero for free on the website. So you can just go to homebrewedcomics.com, download issue zero. If it seems cool to you, then you can come in and back it. I try to make the series as accessible as possible. I know everybody's dollar is very important. So I want to make sure you're getting something that you will like. Okay. I have to ask this kind of a side question. What's the armor class rating on a barista apron? <laughs> oh, it's, it's just light armor. Oh, it's okay. like a, it's like a 10 plus dex. Yeah. So caliber went from being a, you know, medium, medium armor class to a light armor class real quick. And not only that, but let, I'm just going to remind everyone when you're playing D&D and you decide to go randomly run off while you're doing something, <laughs> make sure you tell your DM what equipment you have before you run off. Not when you're trying to use it, when you actually, you know, make the action to run away. Because like in this book, you will see it doesn't always end well when you just decide, oh, I have a gun on me. No, you, you were in a barista uniform serving coffee. Why would you have a gun? <laughs> this is New Orleans, all right? Why would you Why would you be open carrying in the middle of the public when you're serving coffee? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no good argument. <laughs> at most, you're going to get either a seamed cup of coffee with you or, you know, maybe a can of whipped cream at, at best, probably. I think we discussed what he's going to be throwing and it's like, because he thinks he has grenades in, in, this, in these pockets. It actually played out perfectly. He runs in first and he starts uh, going, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to reach in and grab my grenades. And I was like, um, well, re okay, reach in your pocket. And he reaches in. I said, okay, uh, roll a perception check for me. I said, it's a, it's a, it's a no fail situation, but I want to see how bad it is. <laughs> and so he rolls pretty bad and I'm like, okay, cool. So you have forks and knives in this one. And he goes, well, where are my grenades? And I was Brad, you're in a barista uniform. Like, in what world would you have grenades in there? He's like, well, I always carry my grenades. And I was like, you, you need to tell the DM you're going from barista uniform to, you know, combat uniform. And we argued for like five minutes until he realized he wasn't going to win. He's like, well, I should have some coffee in here, right? So he throws a bag of coffee at the giant robot. And then he, you know, that doesn't end well for him. So <laughs> the joy I have in this series is my writing style comes from recording these game sessions and storyboarding what we do. I, you know, I talk to a lot of writers and a lot of artists and people in the indie community who have these very long campaigns and stories that they've written over maybe sometimes 40 years. And while my characters have existed arguably for 40 years because they're based off real people, the actions and everything you see is a spur of the moment thing that we recorded and you get to experience panel by panel from their viewpoint. So the series... It so always sticks with the characters. Like you're always seeing things and experiencing things as they do, because I really wanted the readers to be able to get the, the tabletop experience in a comic book form. And that's the one thing I found interesting in our last conversation. I actually got to, to rewatch it because it, it had been a while since we chatted. It was something that I, I heard the energy in your voice about talking about transferring your game to comic format. And, and that was infectious. That was the fact that it was just, you're taking an exciting game that you've all played together and you continue to play together after all these years. And you're bringing joy to those that are reading it. And I think that's, that's something that I, a lot of people need these days. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've had a lot of conversations early on about the tone we wanted to keep with this. And it's always been, you know, D&D &D was supposed to be our escape from our daily lives. While things might exist in there, there are no reasons behind it other than it happened or, you know, that's that person, right? Uh, somebody asked me one time why all my heroes were male. I said, well, all my friends that are playing are male. You know, if I could get my wife to play, we'd have a female. Um, we have some NPCs that are, and later on, there are some characters that are introduced of different genders and everything else. But they're based off of real people. So anything that happens, everything that goes into it is just because that's us having fun and 
there's no rhyme or reason other than, hey, it either happened because it sounded cool or it happened because the die rolled that way. There's no whiteboard. There's no big meeting room about the discussions of the story. It's literally, hey, this happened. It's recorded. We can't go back. Your fate is sealed in one way or another. <laughs> it is. The only real edits that happen from tabletop to paper are, you know, in any D&D campaign, a DM will introduce something that they think is cool. And I do this all the time. And I put hours into these side quests or these characters that go absolutely nowhere. And I cut those because it's unfair to the reader to get invested in something and then have it not have any payoff. And we made a decision early on too, when this went to comic book form, we're not going to tell anything that doesn't need to be told. So if it doesn't drive the narrative, it's not going to be in the book. So what I do with some of these side things that are just fun and they have nothing to do with the crit narrative or the story itself, I put them as little Sunday comics in the back of the book or they go online. It's called Caliber's Corner and you get to experience some of the stupid things because most of it's Caliber doing stupid stuff that I have to remove because there's so much of it. I have to kind of pick and choose what fits the, the narrative. Mm. And with this book, you're actually getting one where he randomly decides to make this mob mad by drawing penises on their car with a knife. So it wasn't even like he could wash it off. And so he's running from the mob. He's yelling at everybody, you know, like, hey, we got to run. There's a whole mob of people chasing me. Run. Because this was early on in the game. So they're not like, yeah, they're arguably superheroes, but you can still out mob anyone in D D. Case in point, if you're a superhero, it doesn't matter. If I throw 30 enemies at you, you're probably gonna lose. They start running. And so there's two funny things. One is we have this group of superheroes running from just normal people that just have guns. You know, you have Spectre and Boulder who are superheroes running from them. And then you have the fact that this guy just decided randomly to start drawing penises on their car for no absolute reason. And that's where he got the nickname Dicasso. While that story is hilarious and it does add to the development of that character and that depth, you know, that that character has, it doesn't fit in the story we're telling because then I have to tell two pages of him running away from this mob and I have to do the whole build up to that piece you know whereas if I just take it out and do it as a, as a Sunday comic I can do it in six panels as a funny thing that's really the only editing that we have is anything that's unneeded everything else is really from the table we might borrow from one session and move it into another if we have to say, remove this really cool underground uh, community that I created that they did nothing with. But there's this really cool moment from that campaign. We'll just take that moment and transpose it where it fits somewhere else. So you still get to see it and it still really happened. It just might not have happened at that exact moment because I had to remove something that I thought was cool and no one else cared about. <laughs> But that's got to be frustrating as a DM for the, the hundreds of hours that you're putting into this long-standing campaign with your friends and they do absolutely nothing with your creativity. It, there is, but <laughs> I always approach it this way. The game is theirs. I can't take it personal if they don't like what I create because I'm actually not playing the game. You've done multiple Kickstarters, of course, in the past as well, too. And I'm glad that you fulfilled your, your past one that we spoke about. And congratulations on making that successful. And now we're on to this most current one here, too. My sixth one. A sixth one. Six, six, sixth one. Yeah. You're in the half dozen mark. I like that. I was recently called an old timer on Kickstarter. And I was also called a veteran. And I was like, I think I'll stick with veteran. Uh <laughs> I just turned 39, so being called an old timer right before you turn 40 kind of hurts. <laughs> it was meant in all positiveness. So oh, I, didn't, okay. I didn't take any event to it, but it was funny. I was like, let's just let's stick with experience, okay? <laughs> so as a veteran Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Talk, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What campaign tiers do you have this time around? Because I saw the plushies. I saw, you know, I talked about the energy drinks, et cetera. But tell us what we have in store by supporting your campaign. I want to preface this by saying my last campaign was the end of a chapter. So I wanted that one to be huge. There was quite a lot that went into that one. So much so that most of my backers were like, wow, I didn't expect this, which was great. Because this is the first book in chapter two, I really wanted to go back to basics again and focus on what's important, which is the story. You can't run a Kickstarter without t-shirts. So there, there will be t-shirts. There's um, 
you know, your comic, I have four different covers, uh, all amazing covers. So we have two foil covers, which will be deluxes. So you'll have extra content in those. And then you'll have the two standard covers, um, standard and then your variant, which my variant is like a funny. So I always do a, like a standard cover by Mo Lewison, who does a lot of my, a lot of artwork for us. And then I have a funny cover by Robert Nix. And the funny cover is uh, actually the cat playing Dungeons and Dragons and the guys are running from falling dice nice. and they're on the table. So he's giant and they're little, the two foil covers, which are very um, action packed scenes with the giant robot. One of them is the robot, you know, crushing two of the characters. And the other one is the guys fighting the giant robot with coffee cannons. I really wanted to embrace a lot of the comedic elements in the story on those covers. And then tier wise, you're going to have, you know, posters, you're going to have prints, t-shirts, collector cards. I'm doing something unique aside from the energy drink. I'm also doing an actual D&D session. So there will be five sessions available and they're all four hour sessions. So you get 20 hours with myself and probably one other guy from, from my game where you get to create your own crit character. You'll get our beta of the actual crit game. You can create your own character. If you come prepared with the character, if everyone comes prepared for a session, we'll get five sessions. But I always expect some newcomers that don't know everything about D&D, &D, and we're going to have to spend some time, you know, explain the rules. But you'll be able to play as your own version of the characters. And who knows, maybe your characters may show up. We got to get permissions and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that piece with publishing other people's creative works. It would be really cool to get some contributions from this into a future book. We have some spots available. There might need to be some tweaking to the characters and things, but those spots will be available. And I think it'd be really cool to see some contributions done via D and D. It all depends on how those roles go too. So if your character dies in that game, they, they'll probably have to die in ours. Um, <laughs> but what'll be really fun is if we get people to do that here, introduce people to Dungeons and Dragons because that's my my ultimate goal is to get people like myself when I first started playing that were kind of shy and get them to do something that they wanted to do, but didn't know how to, or didn't know who to play with or anything like that, you know, and then they get to experience kind of what we do. I talked to a couple of guys and they, they'd guest DM and have fun with us. And it also gives us a way to interact with some of our fans. That's important and show that personal side of what really makes crit because it's not this pre-written edited upon edited upon edited story. It's just a very organic, fun adventure. I've never actually played D and D. I know a lot of people that haven't played D&D, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I would have never played D&D had the guys that are in this game not bugged me too. I was a DM at, a, a, a district manager at uh, <laughs> GameStop. Some of the employees were like, we get together every once in a while and play D&D. &D. And I'm like, ah, you know, that's, that's not my thing. So where the store was located, the AT&T store next to me, all their guys used to come over and hang out. They thought we were all friends just because I worked there. They were like, oh, well, you should play D&D &D with us. And I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't play D&D. &D. You know, I'm a nerd, but I'm not that big of a nerd kind of thing. Finally, after, you know, being bugged about it so many times, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And we wound up playing a homebrewed version of, of Mass Effect. And I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. So that's how they got me in. I want to do that for other people. I want to be able to like introduce them to something that maybe they wouldn't have wanted to do or didn't know how to get into it. It's just raw fun. There's no wrong answer. You can annoy the crap out of people if you if you play the game wrong. That's a possibility, but then you're playing an annoying character. That's just what it is. I do it all the time. I love to annoy people. <laughs> so when I get to finally play, I'm usually the guy that I find one thing that I really want to do in the game based off of situations, depending on how, where the campaign's at. I just try to figure this character out. And I'm like, this character would really want to do this. And I become so hyper focused on the one thing that I wound up I wind up just kind of annoying everybody because all of my goals go towards that. Recently, I decided I wanted to. Uh, we were hired to do a job, and then we weren't paid, and it just so happened that guy was the king of a town. So I decided instead of trying to kill him because I couldn't get to him, I was too low level. I would infect his entire town with vampirism, but I had to become a vampire first. So my goal was to become a vampire and then turn all the the city into vampires that were my own thralls and then 
make them go kill him. That was my goal. Nice. How I did this was I became a vampire and then I became a cook at kitchen and I started poisoning everyone's food with my blood. <laughs> yeah, that happens in D and D anything can happen. It'll be fun to see what people do with this. You know, there's no guarantee it'll make it in the book. You know, if it's something that we feel fits and would be cool, I don't want to shoehorn something in just to shoehorn it in, but if it really does fit and we feel like a, it would, it mends well with the story and it fits in the places that we have predetermined, then cool. If not, maybe we'll do it like a Caliber's Corner where um, Caliber gets the guest star in it. And if the characters do die, it'll probably be his fault. <laughs> and who knows? Caliber will be the bad guy in this, se- this session. Who knows? <laughs> Pretty fun. Well, you definitely piqued my interest on that for sure. So uh, I can't wait to see what comes of that as well, too. Do we have a price point for that? Uh... So the Dungeon Master tier, that one comes with, so you get two books with it. You get the standard book, you get the foil copy book, and the foil is a, is a deluxe. You get the digital, you get a custom dice tray, you get the, the classes and equipment book, you get the t-shirt and five private game sessions. That one's 275 so that's our biggest tier. And that one I can do worldwide as long as we can make the time zones work. So that, that'll be a big thing. I'd like to make sure that we can make those, the times work. So we'll probably have to do it on a weekend, mm-hmm. work with everyone's schedule. I'll, I, I schedule things for a living, so I'm sure we can make something work. I think that one would be a, a lot of fun to, to just have happen. And we also have, while I'm going through the tiers here, sure. we have the caffeinated hero which is the energy drink, all four covers, um, mini poster, sticker pack. You get the limited edition collector card, T-shirt, digital copies, digital posters. Sorry, 120 for all that. And that includes the shipping for the big box of energy drinks. And it's not just an energy drink. It's a case of 12 12 12-ounce cans. So you get 12 energy drinks in that as well. And you can drink them. You can save one. You can, you know, uh, I, I can't taste anything but I had everyone do a taste test on these and they're a, a rock star Red Bull mix with no bite was what I was told. Cause rock star kind of tends to have like kind of a bite to it. Yeah. And the guys were like, what's this one? It has, it, it tastes a little bit like it, but it has no bite and no aftertaste. So it, we went with that one. We drank it before we played D and D and everyone was wired. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hope so. Big energy drink. <laughs> as far as like add-ons, I'm a big add-on person because you know this is my sixth campaign on Kickstarter, and I have quite a bit of stuff. So I don't like to repeat tiers from previous campaigns. So what I do is say you want the cat. Though this is an add-on on the campaign, so you can customize any of those tiers too. I'm also like really open to suggestions. So if someone emails me or messages me and says, Hey, you know, I'm looking at this tier, but I also want this and I don't see how to make this happen. I might just make a tier that fits what you need. Yes. And that way you can get that. I don't want to lose somebody checking the book out just because of one small thing. Just communicate with me and let me know, Hey, Chris, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. Can I do all this? Yeah, we can make that work as long as it's within the price points. Cause I've tried to keep everything as low as I can. I don't make anything off the Kickstarters. And the last Kickstarter, I want to pay them out of pocket for a little bit because of a few things that uh, ran over budget. If you need anything, just hit me up and I'll, I'll work with it. What keeps you excited about being a DM? Because I always hear that once you become a DM, you never really get out of that role. What excites me about it is getting to play my game. I mean, I get to control it. I get to put everything together and I get to create something that my friends have fun doing probably the best part of it is seeing them enjoy what they're doing or really get into their character. The boulder, uh, Terrell, he'll call me all the time and say, man, I'm sorry, I'm being annoying, but I, I, I want to do this with my character. I want to do this. And I'm like, well, it's not annoying. You know, it makes me feel really good that you enjoy the story and your character so much that you're putting this much time and effort when we're not playing into it. As far as being a DM, that's probably the most fun part is creating that story they enjoy. As far as the comic book, the most enjoyable part is getting to immortalize my best friends while I try to actively kill them in the book. <laughs> Have you come close to succeeding in that latter goal? No spoilers, but some somebody does die eventually. Uh, a couple of people actually die Uh-oh. later. We've been we've played for four years, so you're it's going to be a forty two issue series when it's all said and done with, and they didn't roll well. <laughs> 
I'll just put it that way. I've come very, very close. In fact, uh, there's one character who has gone down many times. And in D&D, there's these things called death rolls. And he has gotten up strictly off of his, his constitution score and being able to uh, roll the death saves. If not, he would have been dead. And they also, you know, it's it's D and D and it's high tech. Later, uh, as we go on, and this is a big thing for me, is staggering the growth of everything around them. So, it'd be very jarring for a reader to pick up a book and have everything be fantastical immediately. There's a lot of explanation, like how did this happen, and there's a lot of questions. So, in the beginning of Crit, everything's very simple. They're the only thing that's special. And then you kind of see the villains that they fight and like, oh, well, they have some special powers. That's cool. Or this guy's kind of like a weird spirit thing, or there's a talking cat. Like we kind of introduce things slowly. So that way it doesn't catch anybody off guard. Um, but as the campaign you know, grows, you see that the technology grow and grow and grow. And so my, my personal argument with myself is if I can have a giant robot, then I can have a giant this, and then this could lead to this. And so it's like a rabbit trail of um, technology growth. And later on, they pitched this idea to me about a device that could help them come back from the dead. It uses nanotechnology and the high-tech guy, Reach, he's the one that built it. And he came up with all the scientific background. And he used actual real science, like things they put into play, 3D printing organs, things like that. He was like, well, we can do this. He goes, my character is high intelligence, high wisdom. I should be able to figure out how to make something like this work. We built it. And of course, I had to put limitations on it. Character could only be unconscious, you know, dead for X amount of time before, he, you know, then you're really brain dead and, you know, you can't really come back from that. Yeah, they, they use that all the time. And the name is, is something I won't say on, on here. I won't give that away yet because the name's very um, interesting. I'll put it that way. It's an acronym. It happened in game. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> For those that get to have the private D&D sessions, maybe they'll get to hear said name uh, that shall not be spoken on, yes. on air. <laughs> For those of you that are fans of Flint Biscuit, it's the after the name of one of their albums. <laughs> Before I wrap things up, is there anything that I haven't touched on you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview? I am announcing the day one tiers. So... You know, first, you know, the first 24 hours. Kickstarter launches Wednesday night. I always run the first eight tiers till midnight on Thursday, Eastern time. That way you get a full, full day. And um, I'm putting, I'm announcing those soon. So hopefully, you know, people can get in on first day and take advantage of those. But the big thing for me is always communicate. So if there's something you want to see or something that I can do to, you know, help you be able to back the book, let me know. Um, I'm not adverse to you to, to do, doing anything as long as again if it falls within the budget of the book we're good so just communicate with me check it out i really just want to get the book out there and have people read it because i love it my friends love it it's a story we're going to continue to tell so well chris i do hate to say but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking well thank you so much for coming back on the show anytime well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. You can find us on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash tgtmedia and our Patreon, which I'm still trying to understand, but I am trying to give content there as well, too. Just patreon.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talk.